Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Charles Bickford in Kenyon Nicholson's The Barker on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a play that portrays a familiar slice of American life. It is The Barker by Mr. Kenyon Nicholson, and it has the fascinating background of a carnival. I suppose there's nobody who doesn't enjoy a carnival for its color, gaiety, and high spirits under the summer skies. The carnival is a world of its own, with its own glamour, its own nostalgias, its own excitements, passions, and heartaches. Mr. Nicholson has captured all this with much skill, and no wonder, because, well, you know, it's rare to find a university professor traveling with a carnival, and it's equally rare to find a carnival man who is a professor of dramatic composition at a university. But Mr. Nicholson is this rarity, and the result is a very fine play. We are happy to have in the starring role that excellent actor, Mr. Charles Bickford. And now, Frank Goss, have you a word about Hallmark? Hallmark is the name to remember when you want to remember your friends for birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, holidays. There is a quality about Hallmark cards that whispers good taste. And you'll send them with pride, for that identifying Hallmark on the back adds meaning. It says, you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Kenya Nicholson's The Barker, starring Charles Bickford. <laughs> Right up, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up. Step a little closer, please. You are now standing in front of the big feature attraction of Colonel Gowdy's Big City Shows. The biggest show for the money that has ever played your beautiful little city. On the inside, you'll see Princess Kalima, the pride of sunny Honolulu, playing and singing haunting melodies from those far-off islands of the Pacific. Hurry up with that dressing, Princess. If you want to go to that dance with me. The tent flap isn't fastened, Nifty. Come on in. Good show tonight, kid. Thanks. Say, what's this dance we're going to? It's some local fraternal order. We gotta go. It's good for business. I like that dress. Makes your eyes look blue. They are blue. Nifty, when are we going to get married? Ah, look, kid. Don't start that again. We'll never get to the dance. It's been six years tonight since we got engaged. Do you realize that? I told you then you were crazy to accept me. I got a kid to put through college before I can think about getting married again. It's a law college. It's going to cost me plenty. Gee, that kid's a wonder. Got brains, too. And living on the farm with his grandparents has made him a regular husky. Nifty, I'd be glad to help out on the kid's college. Oh, I got to do it. He isn't your responsibility, Carrie. He's mine. Look, baby... I don't blame you for getting impatient, and I wouldn't blame you for walking out. Nifty, I'd never walk out on you. You know that. Hey, Nifty, you in there with Carrie? Yep. What is it, Hap? Well, there's a friend of yours out here. Can I send him in? Sure. Who is it? Hello, Dad. Chris. Well, I'll be hanged. Where's your hat? Well, that's a fine way to welcome your long-lost son, I must say. Carrie, this is Chris. Hi. Chris, this is Carrie. I do. What the heck are you doing here? What'd you do, run off from your grandpa and grandma? No, they knew I was leaving. I got lonesome to see you, so I took the first freight out for here. You hopped a freight? What's the good of me shelling out good money to get you educated if you're going to be a bum? Dad, school's let out for the summer. It seemed to me it was time we got acquainted. 
I thought you'd be glad to see me. Well, it isn't that I'm not glad to see you, but I don't want you mixed up in this kind of life. You're going to be a lawyer. Got to have a little class to you. You're 19 now, ain't you? Going on 20, Dad. I'm like you. I, I don't want to be stuck on a farm. I want to travel. You run this show for Colonel Gowdy. I thought maybe you'd get him to give me a job. You forgetting about being a lawyer? Oh, no. I'm going to be a lawyer like you want me to. And after I've been on the road for a summer, I'll be good and ready to get down to studying again. You see if I won't. Well, if you did stay, it'd be only be for the summer. You'd have to work. Oh, thanks, Dad. I'll work. I'll do anything. It's certainly going to be a great summer. A great summer. It sure is. Sure it is. Come on, kid. I'll get you settled. What about that dance? It's too late now. That boat sailed. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Son? Oh, hiya, Dad. I finished sawing this pile of lumber for the new booth. Good for you. And am I starved? Well, lunch is only 15 minutes off. You like the carnival as much as you thought you would? Oh, I like it more. What a way to live. Every week, a new part of the country. New people, new sights. Every time you come to, you... You fall in love with your country all over again. Yeah, it's a pretty good country. And the folks in the carnival, they're swell. You're lucky to have a girl like Carrie. Oh, wait a minute. Did you think I didn't know about Carrie? All you have to do is see you two together. You know, seeing you two together has made me realize what a girl like that can mean in your life. Don't you go getting a lot of ideas. You're just a romantic kid imagining a lot of things. <laughs> Carrie, I've been thinking things over. And I decided the only thing to do is lay our cards on the table. You and me have been palling together for some time, and... But... Well, it comes down to this. We're through. Through? Understand, this isn't something I'm doing on the spur of the moment. But... Well, there are other things to consider. We gotta call it a day, that's all. Oh, Nifty, you don't mean that. Well, what have I done? What have I said? You want me to get along better with a kid? You want me to. No, no, it's just. Well, it's just not gonna work out, that's all. Nifty, I don't even wanna live without you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not ditching you as far as the show's concerned. You're a swell little dancer. You can have your job as long as I'm boss of the outfit. All I mean is the you and me part of it. Nifty, no, don't do this to me. All the plans we've made. Harry, I don't like this any better than you do. But it's the way things have to be, and that's all there is to it. I've got to think of Chris. Chris! Oh, so that's it. I'm not good enough for your precious Chris. Harry, try to understand. Oh, get out. Get out. You said what you came to say. Now get out of here. Get out. Okay, Harry. <laughs> Carrie, Carrie, what's happened? What's the matter? Lo, he's quit me. We're through. Oh, is that all? Well, don't cry like that. You'll make up before the show. You always do. No, not this time. Oh, Lo, you'd think I was dirt under his feet. It's that kid. Everything was all right until that kid walked in here. Yeah. Two of them make me sick with their fine airs. Someday that kid will show it. Someday he'll find out what it's like. To love someone and then have them walk out on you. Wait till that kid falls for some girl. All I hope is I'm around to see it. Wait a minute. That's an idea. Maybe Nifty would come back to me. Lou, would you do it? Would I do it? Would you help me get the kid away from Nifty? Oh, now, wait a minute. He's too young for me. He's older than you are. Listen, I've seen the kid looking at you. He's got a crush on you now. Lou, if you had the stake, you'd blow this show tomorrow, wouldn't you? I sure would. Oh, if you'll make this kid fall for you, I'll give you... a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks? Will you do it? I'd sure be a sucker not to try, wouldn't I? <laughs> Oh, 
Chris. Oh, hello, Lou. I uh, was just watching the people shoot the ducks. None of the customers seem to be doing very well. I bet you could hit one right away. Hap, you're not very busy. Give Chris a gun. Hello, Lou. Here you are, Chris. <laughs> Go ahead, try it. See, I told you you could do it. Oh, gee, it was, was easy. Hand the gentleman down a cupid doll. Oh, no, no, thanks, Hap. Uh, thanks for the shooting. Don't mention it. It's a beautiful night, isn't it? It sure is. What did you used to do back home on nights like this? Oh, I'd go over to my girl's house. A special girl? No, whatever girl it happened to be. And we'd go for a walk and talk. Do you feel like taking a walk tonight? I sure do. If you'll come with me. Well, let's go. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I told you to get up and build them jacks. If you want to stay around here, you've got to brace up and take more interest in what's going on. If you get to bed nights, you wouldn't be so groggy mornings. Where'd you go last night after we shut down here? I looked around for you. Oh, I was nowheres in particular. I took a walk. Look, I don't mean to be nosy, Chris, but I'm counting on you. You and me hit it off pretty good. And there's no reason why, after you get to be a lawyer, we can't settle down somewhere together. I've got plans for us, Chris. Just think how nice it'll be to have an office of your own. People coming to you to get them out of trouble. And more dough than you'll know what to do with. Come on, Chris. Let's be pals. What do you say? Aren't we dead? These last few days, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Chris. <laughs> Look at the Ferris wheel in the carnival down there. Looks like a kid's toy, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like another world up here on top of the hill. You, you know, it's funny. I always knew that someday there'd be one special girl. But I thought I'd have to look for a long time. I never dreamed I'd find you so soon. Chris, there's something I've got to tell you. The only thing I want you to tell me is... Yes, I'll marry you, Chris. Don't, don't, Chris. There's something you've got to listen to, something I've got to tell you. You mean about Carrie and the hundred dollars? You know about that? Honest people who live in tents don't really have secrets from each other. It doesn't matter how it started. All that matters is how we take it from here. Oh, Chris, I... I, I don't know what to say to you. I told you what to say. I'm not good enough for you. That isn't what I want to hear. Oh, Chris. What am I going to do with you? Just love me? Oh, I do. I do love you, Chris. Then will you marry me, Lou? Oh, Chris. Thank you so much. I'd love to. Well, I guess that calls for a kiss. I thought so. Nip. You thought you were putting something over on me sneaking off up here, didn't you? But I followed you. Get out, Lou. I want to talk to Chris. Go ahead, honey. All right, Chris. I'll see you back at camp. I'm glad you followed us, Dad. I'm glad you know about Lou and me. I was wondering how to tell you. Dad, I'm in love with Lou. In love. And Lou's in love with me. You bet she is. She loves you so much, she took a hundred bucks to get you to fall for her. You didn't know that, did you? Yes, I knew it. She was doing it for Carrie. Someone had to do something for Carrie when you walked out on her. Carrie's my business. You thought you were too good for it, didn't you? You think you're too good for everyone in the carnival. Well, okay, I guess that makes you too good for me, too. No, I'm not too good for them. This is my life. These are my people. But they're not yours. You're going to be a lawyer. You're going to be a big man with important friends. And you're going to marry the right kind of girl from the right kind of family. Dad, you got Lou all wrong. She told me about the hundred bucks herself. She wasn't going to take the money. Well, she'd better. She'll need it. She's fired. Fired? That's right. 
We don't want her with the show anymore. Who doesn't want her? You. I'm the boss of the show, and I say she's through. Then I'm going with her. You're doing no such thing. You can't make me stay. You'll see whether I can make you or not. You're my son, and you'll do what I say. I thought you were my friend as well as my father. I'm being your friend now, if you only had sense enough to realize it. You're not going to break Lou and me up. No matter what you try, you're not going to break us up. No? Well, just watch me. Just watch me. In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of The Barker, starring Charles Bickford. But first... Why didn't someone think of that before? You know, I think that's what you're going to say when you see your first Hallmark bouquet. For Hallmark bouquets are something brand new and beautiful, the most delightfully different greeting card you've ever seen. Each new Hallmark bouquet brings you a graceful cut-out basket topped with a large bow of crisp taffeta ribbon and brimming with beautiful flowers, ruby red roses or alabaster gardenias or delicate sweet peas so vividly reproduced you can almost sense their fragrance. But unlike flowers that fade, a Hallmark bouquet keeps its beauty always. Yes, these new Hallmark bouquets are large and lovely and lasting. And though they cost only 50 cents, each one embodies the unmistakable good taste that distinguishes every card that bears the Hallmark name. There's a Hallmark bouquet for that very particular anniversary or birthday for special get-well cheer, or just for a friendly greeting, for every occasion that warrants extra thought and care. And you'll find these exclusive Hallmark bouquets at the Friendly Store where you buy your Hallmark cards. Now, James Hilton in the second act of Kenyon Nicholson's The Barker, starring Charles Bickford. <laughs> Early the next morning, Chris and Lou slipped away from the carnival and got married in the office of the Justice of the Peace. They came back then to face what they knew they had to face. Lou was alone in her tent when Nifty walked in. I just talked to Chris. He told me what you'd done. I ought to shove my fist right down your throat. No use trying to scare me, Nifty. Don't scare easy. What's your game? I haven't got any game. I married him because I love him. You're loving him's only more reason for letting him go. He's not your kind. He's only a green country kid that doesn't know the score. Louie will never forgive you for tricking him into marrying him. I didn't trick him. Ask him yourself. Talk to him. Tell him anything you want about me. See if you can make him change his mind. You leave me alone with him? Sure. Are you packed, Louie? Oh. Your daddy doesn't seem to fancy me as a daughter-in-law. Chris, I want to talk to you. Louie, you know what you said. I'll be outside, honey, if you want me. Where are you going? I told him I'd step out while he has his say. He can say it in front of you. Anything he has to say to one of us is for both of us now. What's on your mind, Dad? What did you want to say? Nothing. Nothing at all. Go away with her. Don't ever let me see you again. She's got you, she can keep you. You ain't worth saving. Okay. If that's the way you feel about it, okay. Come on, Lou. So long, Nifty. Gary! Gary! What, what do you want? Sit down. Nifty, you're hitting my arm. Just one question Nifty. I want you to answer, and if you lie to me, I'll kill you. Did you get Lou to take him away from me? Did you? Answer me. No! You're lying. You know you are. Nifty! Oh! Nifty! What are you doing? Let go of her. Oh. He tried to kill me. Get out. Hey, what's going on in here? It was nothing, Colonel Gowdy. Just a, just a little spat. Go to your tent, Carrie. Nifty, you run this show for me. If you don't want Carrie here, all you have to do is to say so, and we'll fire her. But we can't have scenes like this going on. I don't care what you do with her now. I'm leaving, Colonel. You, you know you don't mean that, Nifty. I need you. Haven't I always played square with you? Yeah, but I'm going just the same. I can't stand it here any longer. Oh, but Nifty, look. Stay the season out. Okay. When the season's over, I'm through. Well, 
Nifty. You picked one heck of a night to get out of the show business. Yeah. Listen to that rain. It's going to clear up before showtime. How do you know? Have I ever missed? Well, by the law of averages, you've got to miss sometime. Where's Doc? I said I'd go over the spiel with him. Oh, well, Doc's never going to draw the customers like you do. He belongs right where he is in the pinball concession. Oh, Nifty. Give it another chance. You're going to miss it. I know it, Hap. I'm going to miss a lot of things. I'm going to miss the lights and the smell of the popcorn and the peanuts. I'm going to miss the look of the towns when we're setting up the show in the early morning. I'm going to miss the faces of the little kids staring up at you and planking down their ten cents. I'm going to miss that holiday air that comes in with the customers. And I'm going to miss all the gang. The ribbings and the beefings that go on, as well as the good times. Yep. I'm going to miss it all. You shouldn't leave, Nifty. This is where you belong. Well, I'm leaving. Uh, Nifty, I, uh... I got a card from Lou and Chris. They're okay. What the heck do I care? I, uh... I'll just leave it here on the table. Maybe you'd like to look at it, uh, before you go. Nifty. What do you want, Carrie? I knew you didn't want to see me. But I had to come all the same. I want to talk to you. We got nothing to say. Look, I'm getting out of here. But I don't see why, after all these weeks, you two can't get some sense in your heads and part friends. See you later. What have you got to say to me? Well, first of all, I, I'm i not here with any idea of getting you to make it up with me. I just wanted to say that even though you have kicked me off the show, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't think too much about what I was doing when... I got Lou to go after Chris. Yeah? Well, it's a little late for postmortems. I know you won't forgive me. But I had to say it anyhow. I'm sorry. And good luck, Nifty. Hey, hey, Nifty! What do you think? It stopped raining. It's clearing all. Hey, Nifty! Say, you want to hear me do the spiel? Yeah, sure. Yeah, all right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, step right up. You're now standing in front of the front of the big feature show of the Midway. The biggest show... Gary, you're going on tonight? Uh, no, you know you put one of the other girls in the pot. Well, just for old times' sake, maybe you better go on. Oh, Nifty. Well, don't stand there blubbering. Go get your costume on. <laughs> Thanks, Nifty. Thanks. The biggest show of the money that ever played your town. What's some steam into it? Don't just talk words. Get right down and tell them about it. Believe it yourself. Yeah, sure, sure. Now, we're introducing Princess... Uh, Kalima, Kalima, the bride of Sunny Honolulu. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, step right up. Yeah, step up a little closer there. Uh, you're now standing in front of the big feature show, uh, the Midway. Colonel, he's dying uh, on his feet. Nick, right you up. shouldn't ever have taken him away from the uh, pinball concession. Up. Got a big show for the money that's ever played your beautiful little city. Oh, get up there, uh, Nifty, and show him yeah, how to do it. Yeah, step right up. On the inside, you... Uh, on the inside... On the inside, ladies and gentlemen, as my assistant has been telling you, you'll see Princess Kalima, the pride of sunny Honolulu. You sure saved the day. And if you'll reconsider your going away, I'll I'll give you a quarter interest in the show. Well, I have missed my train. And I wouldn't want to see the show go on the rocks. Good, good. I'll hurry over to my wagon to make out the contract. Now, don't go away. Hello, Carrie. Carrie. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Your job's yours if you still want it. Oh, thanks, Misty. You, uh, uh... Would you... Uh, well, there happens to be a dance at the Moose Hall that the colonel thinks we should take in. Nifty. I, uh, I have got a card from Chris and Lou. It's right here. Lou's got a job hoofing it in a nightclub. Chris is working in an office. Carrie, 
It's a law office. He's going to get there yet. You bet he is. Since he's married and settled down, I don't see any reason why his old man shouldn't be. Oh, nifty. We both made mistakes, Carrie. I almost made the biggest one of all tonight. This is where I belong. This is home. You're my girl. And baby, if you'll have me, it's going to be you and me in the midway from here on in. Yeah. From here on in. In a moment, James Hilton and Charles Bickford will return. But first, haven't you often thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if people could send their friends flowers that never fade, flowers that would stay bright and beautiful forever? That's just what you can do now with the new Hallmark Bouquets, the newest kind of greeting card. Each Hallmark Bouquet is a delicately cut-out basket that stands by itself nine inches high, overflowing with beautiful flowers and topped with a large bow of crisp taffeta ribbon. There is a card carrying your greeting tied at the top of the basket, and when you open the bouquet, there is your friendly message. Whatever the occasion, for graduations, for birthdays, for anniversaries, to cheer someone who is ill, or just to say hello, you'll find a Hallmark bouquet that will give lasting pleasure to those you remember. They cost only 50 cents each, but they look so expensive. Discover this original and charming way to remember your friends. Stop in tomorrow at the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards and ask to see the new Hallmark bouquets. Here again is James Hilton. It's very exciting to hear a character portrayed just as you imagined when you first read the play. And Mr. Bickford, I want to thank you for giving me this experience tonight. It was a pleasure for me, too. And thanks to Lorene Tuttle, Gloria Blondell, Bill Tracy, and the rest of the cast. You know, I look forward every week to the fine programs you have on the Hallmark Playhouse. In fact, it's pretty hard to forget Hallmark under any conditions. You see, those greeting cards of yours are such constant reminders of very pleasant associations. Well, that's very nice of you to say, Mr. Bickford. It's good to know you've enjoyed being here as much as we've enjoyed having you. And we hope you'll be listening next week when we present A.B. Schifrin's I Like It Here, starring Paul Lucas. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is D. Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Gene Holloway. Ladies and gentlemen, for 27 years, America has remembered her disabled servicemen by wearing red paper poppies. Those poppies go on sale next Saturday in the American Legion Auxiliary's annual drive. Show your remembrance of the sacrifice our servicemen made by making this year's poppy sale the biggest yet. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Charles Bickford will soon be seen co-starred with Bing Crosby in the Paramount picture Riding High. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all and inviting you next Thursday and every Thursday to tune in one half hour earlier and listen to the adventures of Casey, crime photographer, followed by the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>